I'm using a polyprep chromatography column from BioRan. Column originally comes with this attachment at the end that closes the outlet, so you just snap that off. The yellow cap fits on this end. The larger cap fits on this top, and once again is airtight. It snaps shut. I'm starting my synthesis with rink amide resin here. Weighed out 100 milligrams. It's very fine sand-like texture. And the solvent I'm swelling the beads in is N-methyl pyrrolidone. So this is my mixture, 100 milligrams of beads, one mil of solvent. These beads have been swelling in the refrigerator overnight. The beads are a slurry, almost like silica gel and organic solvent. So I'll dump them in. I'll then rinse the vial with some NMP to transfer more beads. Here the solvent is slowly dripping through. I've added a milliliter of NMP to the vial and I'll dump that in as well. Here I'm using a 10 mil syringe and a septum to apply gentle pressure to the beads forcing the solvent out of the column. Uh, septum that I've drilled a hole in there and I'll put that on top. Put the rink amide resin starts with an FMOC group attached. To remove that we'll make a solution of piperidine in NMP. 20% piperidine, 80% NMP. Piperidine is a base that will selectively react with the FMOC group. I'm adding a milliliter of 20% piperidine to the beads in the column. I'll use the lid, snap, and I'll agitate by hand first. Here I have it on the vortexer, 1500 RPMs, 15 minutes. Pressure can build up during the deep protection. It's important to open the top first to release the pressure before opening the bottom. Now I can open the bottom and collect the deprotection solution without pressure forcing the liquid out. To spectrally analyze the FMOC eluted from the column, I'm taking 10 microliters of the eluate, diluting that into 990 microliters of ethanol. So it's a hundredfold dilution. So I'm taking a spectrum of the 100x dilution in a 2 millimeter path length cuvette. This is my spectrum. This peak here will enable me to quantitate the FMOC concentration. Here it's telling me precisely 0.495 is the absorbance at 300 nanometers. In solid phase synthesis it's very important to wash the beads after important steps. This gets rid of unwanted reactants. I'm now washing the column with NMP. I'll do this three times with one milliliter each. I'm trying to wash the sides of the walls as well as the beads themselves. I'm trying to get rid of all traces of caparity. Now I'll wash with dichloromethane, CH2Cl2. Again, my goal is to get rid of any traces of previous reactants. Dichloromethane is much runnier, much less viscous. And but once again, I'm trying to wash the sides. Once the FMOC group is removed from the column, I'm ready to attach an amino acid to the resin. 
and the scale of this reaction is determined by the micromoles of free amine on the column which I've measured with the spectral analysis of the FMOC eluded. To couple my amino acid I'm using HHU. I'm using 47 milligrams for this reaction. I'll make it a 0.2 molar solution in N-methyl pyrrolidone. My pre-activation mixture includes an amino acid, coupling agent, I'm using HATU, and a base, I'm using diisopropyl ethyl amine. Here I'm activating an amino acid lysine that has a dye attached to it, a dapsyl group. This color will help me see the binding of the amino acid to the resin. The beeper is going off, meaning five minutes have expired, and now I'm adding the activated dapsyl lysine to the deprotected beads on the column. Once I do this, I'm expecting the beads to covalently bond to this activated amino acid. Here's my uh, activated dapsyl lysine. Get it into the beads there. Okay, should be reacting now. Once I've suspended the beads manually, then I put them on this vortexer, 2200 RPMs. I will still need to resuspend manually every few minutes because the beads will settle. The beads tend to this is what it looks like when the beads settle and a little agitation can get them resuspended. After 20 minutes, I drained the excess dapsyl lysine and washed the column with NMP and dichlormethane. Although you can see I did wash away quite a bit of excess dapsyl lysine, the column is still red. That's the covalently bound amino acid. I'm activating FMOC lysine. The last step is to add diisopropyl ethyl amine. When I add this, we'll see a color change begin in the reaction vessel. So this will turn a pale yellow color that will develop a little bit over the five minutes that I reactivate it. I'm adding the pre-activated glycine to the column. This will be a little different because the column has color now. So it will be less obvious whether the amine is reacting with the activated glycine. When a nucleophile reacts with the activated amino acid, it displaces a bright yellow colored molecule. This color can be used to determine how well the reaction is working. Here's the eluate from the column after the reaction has occurred between the activated f glycine and the beads. You can see it's much more yellow than it was previously. By comparing the color of what went into the column versus what is eluted from the column after reacting, you can get a good idea of how well it worked. To verify whether I have successfully reacted all the amines on the column, I'll run a Kaiser test. I'm now going to do what's called a Kaiser test. It's based on the reaction of ninhydrin, so this is a convenient kit that has three reagents in it. For my Kaiser test, I'll use this very small spatula. Just kind of dip it in the beads. That's about right. Just a few beads on the spatula, which I'll then put into the F2. For the microscale Kaiser test, 25 microliters of the three solutions in an Eppendorf tube with a few beads into the hot block, which is about 80 degrees Celsius for three minutes. Here are Kaiser test results in Eppendorf tubes. On the left are deprotected beads. On the right are protected beads. So easy to see the difference. 
if the activated amino acid has reacted well with the beads, then I expect to get the result on the right, the colorless result, because all the amines have reacted with FMOC amino acids. There are no free amines to react with ninhydrin. After I verified a successful Kaiser test, it's back to deprotection, spectral analysis, activate the next amino acid, Kaiser test that one, repeat. After three days, I built my entire peptide, 10 amino acids bound to the column. I'm ready to cleave this from the beads. Here my column with beads is in a vacuum chamber, drying it out. After drying on the vacuum pump, the apparent volume is much smaller. The beads are all dehydrated now. The beads containing the peptide are like dry sand now. Peptide mass is 130.4 milligrams. I started with 100 milligrams of resin, so I hope I have at least 30 milligrams of peptide attached to those beads. I weighed out 2.4 milligrams of my peptide bearing beads. I'm going to add 100 microliters of 95% TFA, 5% water. This should cleave the peptide from the beads. TFA often fumes in air. In this case I have the advantage of a colored peptide so I'll be able to tell whether it's been released from the beads. So I anticipate this will take maybe uh, a couple of hours to not only cleave the peptide from the beads but to remove the protecting groups from the serines and uh, the lysine that I have in this peptide. Here I've got the beads in TFA on the vortexer. TFA is dense so the beads tend to float on the top but there's clearly red color in the TFA solution, therefore I can tell that the peptide is being cleaved from these beads. It's only been about 15 minutes. It's now been about 30 minutes of cleaving from the resin. Getting redder in the solution. Here's the HPLC analysis of my finished peptide. One major peak here, this is 80% of the area. A couple 5% peaks here and here. Don't know what those are but it looks good. This is electrospray mass spectral data from the peptide showing a um, peptide mass of 1398. This is plus H. Uh, this is the doubly charged peptide with two hydrogens attached and it looks it looks great. Here I'm lyophilizing my final peptide. Let it go overnight in the morning. I'm hoping I have a fluffy red powder. Here's my dry product, rather fluffy, and that's my peptide.